another automotive woman and this week I've been super excited because I'm back behind the wheel of one of my favorite vehicles the Mini Cooper S only this time it's all electric so first I'm going to take you for a walk around have a closer look at that interior and then finish it off with a test drive but don't forget connect with me on social media or check out my latest webpage automotive woman news because I'm keeping you up to date on all the latest automotive and motorsport news from around the world If you're familiar with my channel, then you already know I grew up on a go-kart track. So naturally, a Mini Cooper resonates a lot with me, but I like it more than just for its go-kart inspired handling, but also for its character, fun interior, and now instant torque because it's no secret EVs offer the best torque. Now the Mini Cooper S electric version went into production in 2019, but launched in 2020. So naturally the motor has remained the same, but features have changed along with the full Mini lineup, and that includes their gas-powered vehicles as well. New changes for 2022 a Mini Cooper SE include standard LED lights up front with now standard Union Jack design style lights in the rear, updates to the front grille and rear bumper to improve aerodynamics, and exterior and interior color combinations have been updated along with technology. But like I said, the motor has remained the same. So it's still a single gear front wheel drive with 181 electric horsepower with 199 pound feet of torque, all coming from a 32 2.6 battery pack. I have the optional 17 inch wheels surrounded by Pirelli all season tires. Now I highlight wheels in every single one of my videos, but they are incredibly important on EV vehicles in particular, because if you choose to change your wheel because you don't like the style, well, this can alter your range. So please, before you consider investing in a different set of wheels, consult a specialist. I've now had the opportunity to experience braking regeneration on a few different EVs that I've experienced, such as the Kia Soul EV and the Audi e-tron. But I can 100% say with confidence that the Mini Cooper SE has provided the best experience. So you have two different levels of braking regen. You have your low level that essentially allows you to come to a stop, like in a gas powered car, you can coast. But then there's the high level of braking regen where you can literally come to a stop without using your brakes. Now this technology is only good when you're in stop and go traffic. Unfortunately, it's not useful when you're on the highway, but when you can use it, it helps you to recharge your battery slightly. And speaking about charging, the 2022 and Mini Cooper SE now offers an increase of range to 183 kilometers or 114 miles for my US viewers. It still offers three different levels of charging. First, your level one is your at-home charging. And this is what I've been using all week along with a traditional three-prong outlet. But back to that in a moment. Then you have your level two where you can have an electrician come to your house and install a unit. You'll charge in about seven to eight hours. Then you have your level three, which is your DC fast charging. And the Mini Cooper SE can charge up to 80% full in about 35 minutes. But I said your level one, I'd come back to it. This is important because if you are charging at home and you're just using a traditional three prong outlet, you have to go into your infotainment system and set it to low. If you don't set it to low, there's a chance you can overheat your socket and cause a fire. So please go into your infotainment system and set charging to low. Two features which never surprise me in a mini, doesn't matter if it's electric power or gas powered, is how limited the space is in the trunk or in those back seats. But I can tell you it's fine for two people or fine for a small family of four. Now if you need extra storage space, well, these seats actually fold and there's convenient levers up top that you just pull on both sides. You also have a cargo cover so you can keep everything protected. And if you need more storage space, well, there's more under here where you'll also find a tire mobility kit. Like I said, space is tight back here, but this particular model, the Mini Cooper SE, is good for four individuals. It's fine for small kids or preteens, but space back here will get tight when you're trying to fit adults. 
As for storage, it's available behind both front seats. There's nothing on this side and you actually have three individual cup or bottle holders back here. Now there's no connectivity, no extra climate panel and no armrest, but you do receive a panoramic sunroof with an extension back here, which backseat passengers can open and close. And there is a convenience hand lever right here. So rear seat passengers can get it with ease. The interior of a Mini is by far my favorite, besides a Ferrari or an Aston Martin, and those vehicles are in totally different categories. But for the 2022 models, you have some more updates, such as more gloss, a purpose-built interior for the SE model, and some more tech. But I should say that I have the Premier Plus line package. It's about $8,000 that that will add to your MSRP price tag but with it I get more luxury and more tech first I'll begin up top with the panoramic sunroof which I've already mentioned every seat in here is leather these seats up here are manually operated you also have a thigh support as well and for 2022 these are heated with the option of a heated steering wheel to turn on the heated steering wheel there's actually a button on the side of the column the rest of the wheel i like the design it reminds me of the m3 competition that i just reviewed it has great grip it feels nice some of the functionality is a little bit basic but it's super clean all easy to use on the left hand side i just have the basic cruise control with lane departure warning if you want a more driver advanced option there is one available that gets you your front and rear collision avoidance it gets you your lane keep assist and your adaptive cruise control on the right hand side i have my voice command my bluetooth and my radio functions everybody receives complimentary three months of Sirius XM radio. There's also a heads up display and this is optional. I choose to deactivate it because it's actually just displayed on a screen and I find that it's a bit distracting but it's your vehicle so you choose. The digital driver cluster is fully digital. Looks fantastic. That's also standard across the line now along with the standard infotainment system which is increased to 8.8 inches. Again, sticking with that Premier Plus line package, I also have a navigation. I have Apple CarPlay, not Android Auto. Android Auto is not offered. I also receive wireless charging through here some additional connectivity which is fine to support two people now this is the fun stuff these toggle switches down here on the left hand side you have your parking assist because you have full camera views in here you could turn it on and off if you don't like the lines or the beeping to assist you then you have your braking regen that I spoke about earlier you can choose if that's going to be low or high of course you have your start stop switch beside there you can turn off your trash control if you don't want it I recommend not doing that and then all the way over here on the right hand side you have your driving modes you have your green your green plus you have a mid and then you have a sport and the sports pretty cool because the graphics always change on your infotainment system but on your digital driver cluster a little go-kart icon pops up it looks pretty cool but that said let's hit the road so I can provide you guys with my overall driving impression from this past week and how I turned my Mini Cooper SE experience into a game 22 Mini Cooper SE with instant torque oh yes <laughs> One of the many reasons why I love EVs, but let me go ahead and put that in green mode to conserve. Plus I'm in inner streets. There's no need for sport mode, but let's get right to that range because although Mini has increased the range for 2022 to 183 kilometers, it is less than its competitors, the Bolt, the Ionic, and the Nissan Leaf, but 
those vehicles are definitely missing mini styling. And I will take the reduction in range to have this style. But that aside, I mentioned how I turned my week driving the Mini Cooper SE into a game, and I'll tell you how. So the, the most amount of range you're gonna get in this vehicle when you are fully charged is 183 kilometers, 114 miles for my US viewers, but you are never going to achieve that when you have every feature turned on. So you definitely have to keep it in green mode. You definitely can't use your air conditioning at the same time or your radio. So it's been a game because when I enter the highway, I'm in sport mode, right? Because you want to enter fast. But then when I get on the highway, I turn it onto green. I put my windows down, so clearly I don't need my air conditioning, and I can't hear my radio, so I just keep that off. So I get pretty good range. And it's been a game to see how well I can do. And then to top it off, then I have braking regen, and that has been super fun, especially with the high level, because I haven't used my brakes a lot, which honestly, that's probably gonna help you with maintenance, because you're not using your brakes a lot. But I you know, highly recommend when you have a lot of people around you, use your brakes, you don't wanna miscalculate your distance and run into anybody. But like I said, using everything, it has definitely been a game for me. And I don't have to worry about range anxiety because I'm driving about 30 minutes to work, 30 minutes back, I, I can charge up at work and then I charge up at home and, and I'm in stop and go traffic, right? So I'm always using my braking regen. So that's one thing to keep in mind, right? You don't have to have that anxiety because you're able to charge everywhere. But this is super important. If you do not have a level two charger at home, like I don't, right? I just have my traditional three prong outlet, my 120 volt. You have to go into your infotainment system and you have to set it up on low. If you don't set it up on low, you can definitely blow one of the other charges from one of the other, either a, a socket or in your uh, additional extension cable if you're trying to reach uh, the port inside your house. So keep that in mind, okay? Because that happened to me. I had to go into my system, make sure it said low charge, and then just leave it alone. And like I said, I'm not driving a lot. I'm using my regen a lot. So I, I never had to worry about range anxiety. But what I like to do in all my videos is recommend a test drive because test drives are complimentary. So what I'll do is provide a link down below so you guys can find your closest mini dealership. But for now, I'm Juliana, your automotive woman. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell because you don't wanna miss out to Tuesday, Feature Car Friday, and you wanna check out the new webpage, Automotive Woman News, because I keep you up to date on all the latest news from the world of automotive and motorsport. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh yeah, <laughs> amazing. Breaking regen with some breaking.